Nick Carter, famous for chasing crime. Every week at this time, two great names are joined, brings you one of the most resourceful and daring characters in all detective fiction, Nick Carter, Master Detective. Nick, isn't there any way out of here? I've gone over every inch of it, Patsy. There's not a chance. Oh, it's like being buried alive. I almost wish he had shot us. It would be better than, than dying like this. I'm going to make him wish he'd shot us, too. What? In fact, I'm going to make him come back to do it. Right now. And now, the case of the bearded queen. Today's adventure with Nick Carter. Today, Scubby Wilson, reporter on the Globe Gazette, finally got delivery on his new car and is preparing to give Nick's secretary, Patsy Vaughn, his one and only girlfriend, the first ride. Why don't we turn this corner and you get a look at it, Patsy? <laughs> the slickest, smoothest little convertible that ever came out of Detroit. No more riding the elevator, eh, Scubby? No, ma'am. When Scubby Wilson drives by, strong men will turn green with envy and fair ladies will swoon oh. with delight. <laughs> you going to let me drive? Well, I might let my wife drive if I ever get one. So if you'd care to qualify. Uh-huh. For the umpteenth time, Scubby, no thanks. Oh, I mean it, Patsy. With a car like that, think of what a honeymoon we could have. Canada, maybe, or the Rockies. Uh-huh. Thanks, Scubby. But I think I'll stay single and a pedestrian. That's only because you haven't seen the car yet. Oh, and now before we turn the corner, maybe you'd better shade your eyes. It may prove a bit dazzling at first. <laughs> well, but... let's turn the corner and see. Okay, I'm a good woman, but don't say I didn't warn you. Now, behold the pride of the motor car industry, the glory of... Well? Holy cats! My new car is gone! Somebody's stolen it! <laughs> All right, Sergeant. And if the car should turn up this afternoon, will you call me here at my office? Thanks a lot. Goodbye. What did he say, Nick? Nothing yet, Scubby. Uh, they put it on the police radio, but it wasn't very encouraging. There's been an epidemic of car thefts lately. And none of the stolen cars has been recovered. Oh, gee, Scubby, that's tough. Oh, fine, fine. Fifteen hundred dollars, and I only drove it twenty blocks. Brother, that's the most expensive taxi ride I ever had. Have the police any ideas, Nick? Yes, yes, they do, Patsy. I think it's the work of a gang of boys about 16 or 17. Why, kids that age wouldn't be able to sell the cars if they did steal them, would they? Oh, well, not unless they were booked up with some crooked used car dealer who had a place where the cars could be repainted and the serial numbers changed. Uh Exactly. If kids are stealing cars on a large scale, they're working for some adult. And there's nothing more rotten than a crook who makes criminals out of youngsters. Some kids seem to be born that way. Oh, no, they're not, Scubby. No, they're not, Scubby. It's a matter of environment and training. Remember, these boys grew up with no place to play except the streets under the elevated. Give them a fair chance and they're all right. That's true, Scubby. Nick proved it with the downtown boys club. Right. Why, some of those fellows down there had pretty bad records and we got them. But now I'd trust them anywhere. Oh, I know. But at the same time... Oh, let me get it. Hello. Yes, yeah, speaking. Huh? Oh, hey, that's great. They found it. They did? Oh, good. Not even scratched, huh? You sure? Oh, swell. Oh, who took it, do you know? Oh, yes. Yes, I know him. Well, thanks, Sergeant. I'll be right down. Was it stolen by somebody you know, Scubby? Somebody we all know, Patsy. Huh? Danny Walker, Nick. Danny Walker? Why, he belongs to the downtown boys' club. Are you sure? Sergeant Brady says they've arrested him, and he admitted taking it. I can't believe it. Come on. We're going to look into this thing right now. Oh, lay off, will you, Nick? I told you, if I'd known the car belonged to a friend of yours, I wouldn't have took it. It's you I'm interested in, Danny, not the car. I don't like to see you here in jail. You're the first member of the club who's got into trouble in more than a year. I want to find out why and help you if I can. I don't belong to your club no more. I quit a month ago when my folks moved over to the west side. Oh, is that so? 
I knew you hadn't been around lately, but I didn't know you'd quit. Oh, them clubs is kid stuff. I'm 18 years old. Danny, listen, we've been pretty good friends. Oh, uh, look, Nick, you're a good Joe, see, even if you are a private eye, but let me alone, will you? No, Danny, I won't. When you came out of reform school, you gave me your word to go straight. And until now, you have. What's changed you, Danny? What's happened to you? Well, I... I lost that job you got me, and I had to get some money quick, see? It was kind of a debt. Um, of honor, like. So I swiped the car to get the dough, and I got caught, and that's that. You stole that car for somebody else, didn't you? No, I didn't. I stole it for me. Danny, look, I came here to go your bail because we're friends, and because I thought you honestly wanted to go straight. Now, you can help me protect other boys from getting into trouble the same way you did. If you'll only tell me... If I'll the... turn stool pigeon, huh? Well, I won't do it. No, sir, I tried going straight, and it didn't work. I'll take this rap. I'll make up for it when I get out. I'll make up for it plenty. Those elevated trains make so much noise, it's a wonder anyone gets any sleep around here. You can get used to anything, Patsy. Oh, there's Scubby in front of that delicatessen. And there's a space where we can park. I hope he's been able to find out something. Hello, beautiful. Hello, Scubby. Hi, Nick. You have any luck, Scubby? No, not much. There's a gang in this neighborhood, all right, but the kids wouldn't talk to me. They have any regular place to meet? There's no settlement house and no boys club. But some of them hang out at the West Pine Street garage. A garage? Now, don't get excited. I know it sounds like a perfect lead, but I met the boss. And if he's a crook, I'm Jesse James. Well, I'd like to talk to him anyway. What's he like? Nice old fellow. Name of Bainbridge, but everybody calls him Pops. I think you and he will have a lot in common. What? Not you, Nick. What? I said I think you and Pops Bainbridge will have a lot in common. <laughs> <laughs> oh, never mind. You'll see for yourself. Come on. <laughs> I just don't know what to think, Mr. Carter, why Danny used to mind the gasoline pumps for when I'd go out to eat. Maybe there'd be 30 or 40 dollars in the cash register, and he never touched a cent of it. I'll swear to that. I see. Oh, Pops, any calls? No, not a thing, Joe. Hey, I want you to meet my friends. Yeah? Miss Bone, Mr. Wilson. Hello. And Mr. Carter. Hello. Oh, yeah. Nick Carter. Well, how do you do? This is Joe Fernay. He keeps his taxi here, and I take his calls for him. Uh, Nick Carter, the private eye, huh? Uh-huh. Heard about you. Now, I'll be up front, Pops, in the office. All right, Joe. Come on, Mr. Carter. And you folks, too. I want to show you something. I didn't tell Nick about this, Mr. Bainbridge. I oh. thought you'd like to do it yourself. All right, in here. We're right down the elevator. Now, will you push the button, Mr. Carter? The one marked B. We'll go in the basement. Oh, certainly. But what's this all about? You'll see in a minute, Nick. Oh, a cigarette, Mr. Bainbridge? Hey, the name's Pops. No, thanks. I don't smoke. Scubby, don't you see the no smoking sign on the wall? Oh, sorry. Golly, these garage elevators are big things, aren't yeah, they? Well, we park cars on the upper floor and use this elevator to take them up. Oh. There now. <clears throat> now, wait till I find the light. There we are. Why, it's a club room. Oh, look, Nick, a handball court. And there's a dart game. Yeah. Hmm. Uh-huh. And a radio, checker game, and chess. Mm. Hey, you've done all right here, Pop. Mm. Well, it isn't much, but I've seen a lot of boys get into trouble hanging around the street, so I. Hey, here's that... a deck of cards. Like to try a hand at gin rummy, Nick? Oh, no, thanks. <laughs> oh, baby. look, Nick. Somebody's been doing a little art work on these cards. You see the beard on this Queen of Hearts? Whoever drew that has talent. Even changed the expression on her face. Hey, that's pretty good. <laughs> I hoped I was helping the boys by fixing up this place, but now I don't know. Well, why do you say that, Pops? Well, look what happened to Danny, one of the finest youngsters I ever knew. Now, maybe hanging around the garage here got him one in a car of his own. I'm afraid it's not that simple, Pops. Well, thanks for your time. You've been very helpful. I'm just sorry I couldn't do more. You've helped me a great deal. A great deal more than you know. What's the gag, Nick? You didn't come to the jail just to play cards with me. Oh, yes, I did, Danny. Let me deal your hand. Okay. You know how to play poker, don't you? Sure, but I ain't got no money. I'm playing for higher stakes than money. Uh, wait. Huh? Never mind picking up your cards. 
I have you beaten. How do you know? We ain't looked at the hands yet. I have three aces, and you're holding a pair of sixes. You a mind reader or something? Turn them over and see. Well, I'll... Hey, what is this? You stacking the cards on me? No. I was reading the backs of the cards, Danny. A mark deck, huh? So what? See this card? Yeah. Five of clubs, isn't it? Yeah. Hey, show me those marks, will you? In a minute. This is the ten of diamonds, right? Right. And the seven of spades? The queen of hearts? Wait a minute. That queen of hearts. Got a beard on it. Has it? Pete Krovick put that beard on there. I seen him do it. Oh. So you played with this deck before. You huh? bet I played with them before. Where'd you get them cards? Don't you know? Who gave me a... Come on, quit holding out on me. You're holding out on me, aren't you, Danny? Yeah, I... Yes, I have been. I guess I've been a sucker, ain't I? Taking the rap for somebody who... Who what, Danny? Listen, Nick. Did you mean that about going my bail if I helped you crack this case? Danny, the minute you tell me who's behind these car thefts, you're on your way out of here. Oh, no. Get me out first, then I'll talk. All right. It may take me a couple of hours to make the arrangements, and I have to see a client at 8. But if I can't be here, I'll send Scubby to bring you to my office. That's okay. And don't worry about your case, Mr. Carter. I'll crack it for you. Good boy. Brother, I'll crack it wide open. That's Nick's house over there, Danny. Okay. You better park on this side, Scubby. Nick's car's in front of the house. Sure. Only be here a few minutes anyway. Got to meet a guy for an interview pretty soon. Oh, come on. Nick's waiting for us. Gee, I feel like the mayor or something with two of you bringing me here. Well, Nick didn't want to take any chances. On me running out, huh? No, on anything happening to you. Where are your bodyguards? But <laughs> you're guarding me from what? Nobody even knows Nick sprung me. Maybe not, but I still think that green sedan was following us. That green sedan must have been your imagination, Patsy. Either that or we lost him in the last block or two. I hope so. We're here, Nick. Oh, hello. Is everything all right? Yeah, hi, Nick. Everything's fine. You bring the reports on the other car thefts, Patsy? Well, oh, Nick, I'm sorry. I left them in the car. Oh, I'll get them for you, Miss Bowen. We won't take it, Jim. Oh, no, Danny, let's come into it. Danny, look out! Hey, oh. Good grief! Oh. He ran into him on purpose. Come on. It was that green sedan I saw following us before. Patsy, call an ambulance. Right. Scubby, head off any traffic. Sure, Nick. Here, Danny. Here, Danny. Let me put my coat under your head. Danny, can you hear me? It's Nick. Nick. It was him, Nick. I know, Danny. Don't try to talk. Got to... Got to tell you about those cars. All right, son. What about them? The eye. What eye? Who do you mean, Danny? Look for the eye in the L... L... Ah. Danny. Oh, the poor kid. He's fainted. No, Scubby. He's dead. The I and the L. Can Danny's dying words be the clue that will lead Nick to the head of the car thieves and Danny's killer? We'll see what happens in just a moment. Now, back to the case of the Bearded Queen. Today's adventure with Nick Carter. Back at the office, Nick, Patsy, and Scubby are puzzling over the connection between the automobile thefts and Danny Walker's dying words. Look for the I in the L. Nick, the only way I can figure it must be some detective on duty around the elevated train. Naturally. Scubby, look, Brady, and ask him confidentially if any L detective has shown sudden prosperity since these car thefts started. Sure, Nick. If only we could have got the license number of that green sedan. Yes. Well, at least we have the fragments of glass from that shattered headlight. That may help us to identify it. Uh, and the police are checking every garage in town for a green sedan with a broken headlight lens. I felt sure that car was following us. But I didn't see it when we got here. Probably parked the car up the street with his lights off and his motor running just in case. And when Danny started to cross the street alone, the murderer saw his chance and took it. Right. Well, the next thing is to find out if any older men sat in those card games with Danny. You think the leader of this gang played cards with the boys? Not only played cards with them, he cheated. Oh. Danny realized it when he saw the bearded queen of hearts in that marked deck. So-called debt of honor, he stole Scubby's car to repay, was a gambling debt. Well, then maybe the same trick was played on some of the other boys. That might account for the rest of the stolen cars. That's the way I figure it. 
After a boy had stolen one car, it wouldn't be hard to frighten him into stealing more by threatening to expose him. Well, that's the lowest trick I ever heard of. I agree with you, Scubby. Yes. Well, when we find out who won with that Mark Dick, I think we'll have the leader of the gang and Danny's murderer. Perhaps Bainbridge ought to know. Right, Patsy, and that's where we're going. Scubby, as soon as you've talked to Sergeant Brady about the detectives, phone me at the West Pine Street garage. Well, there are a couple of older fellows who sometimes used to play down there, Mr. Carter, but hey, I do Pops. Oh, Joe. What's the matter? No gas tonight? Oh, I didn't hear, hear you drive up. Been here two, three minutes. You're so busy talking to your friends, you didn't see me. Oh, we were talking about Danny Walker. Yeah, nice kid. Too bad he had an accident, wasn't it? How about putting some gas in my can? Yeah, sure, Joe, sure. Right away. Hey, answer that, will you, Mr. Carter? Oh, yes, yes. It may be for me anyway. I'm expecting a call. Oh, maybe it's for me too, Nick. I'd better come with you. Nick, I didn't want to be left alone with Joe. Did you see the look on his face and how scared Pops was? Yes, I noticed it. You better stay right outside the booth here. Yes. Hello? West Pine Street Garage. That's you, Nick? Oh, yes, Scully. What did you find out? Not a thing. As far as Sergeant Brady knows, there's nothing against any of the detectives around the elevator. Of course, there's been no time for any investigation, but Sergeant Brady thinks we're on the wrong track. He may be right. Now, the I and the L is the only thing we have to go on, and I'm going to follow it through. Okay. Oh, uh, say, will you ask Pops if he found my cigarette lighter? I had him. We were going down to the basement there. Remember when Patsy pointed out that no-smoking sign and I... Scubby! Had... That may be it. That may be what? Never mind. You at headquarters? Yes, why? I'll call you back in 15 minutes. Give you the whole story for your paper. Did he find out anything, Nick? Wasn't anything to find out. Where are Pops and Joe? Uh, they went out to the gas pumps. Good. I want to take another look at that elevator. Are we going down to the club room? Not this time. Must have been blind not to have seen it before. Seen what? An elevator made of steel plates riveted together, push-button controls, and a no-smoking sign painted on the wall. Well, what's unusual about that? Here's the elevator. Step in. I'll show you. Uh-huh. See, Patsy? One of those rivets is right in the middle of the eye, in no smoking. I and the L. The letter I and the no smoking sign in the elevator, of course. Danny died before he finished the word. But, well, how does that... This elevator is run by push-button controls, Patsy. A button for each floor. I know, but... There were another floor. A secret floor. The control button for it would have to be concealed, too. And that rivet in the letter I may be it. Push it, Nick. Let's find out if... Nick, we're going down to the boys' club room. I think you'll find we're going past the club room, Betsy. But we can't go past the basement. No? Ever hear of a sub-basement? Huh? Why, of course. Yes, we're passing the club room. There is a secret floor. Maybe we're going to discover a lot of secrets. Well, this seems to be it. Whatever it is. Gosh, it's dark here. Uh, there should be a light switch near the elevator. Yes, here it is. Nick, it's another garage. A complete paint shop. And mechanical equipment for working over stolen cars. Look, at the other end of the room, a green sedan. With a broken headlight and the fender all dead. That's the car, and... all right. The one that killed Danny. Oh. stop her. You two, sister. Joe, I, I thought you were... I came down while you was telephoning. I've been standing right behind this pillow waiting for you, baby. You and the boyfriend. Now, look, Joe. Carter, take your rod out of your pocket and drop it on the floor. No, no, don't turn around. Whatever you say. But you're not playing this very smart. Smarter than you, Gladfoot. Take that pocket, <coughs> sister, just in case you might be packing some heat. Where's Pops? Have you done something to him? Me? I don't do nothing to nobody, unless it's an accident. Of course, I do have an awful lot of accidents. Hit and run accidents, Joe? Sometimes. But I'll be able to do better than that for you two. Something real neat and artistic. Now, wait. You don't realize the police know we came here. So you come here. Then you left, see? Nobody will find this cellar. Nobody will ever find you. So long, suckers. I'll see you again tomorrow the next day. And when I do, you're going to have one of the neatest little accidents that ever happened. Nick, isn't there any way out of here? No. Just this one big bare room. Nothing but the pillars that support the building. These workbenches and garage equipment. And the elevator shaft at the other end. But it's like being buried alive. 
I almost wish he had shot us. Patsy, I'm going to make Joe wish he had shot us. What? I'm going to make him come right back to do it right now. Dick, why are you taking off your shoes? I may want to walk quietly before I'm through. Hand me that monkey wrench there. Oh, that won't be any good against a gun, Nick. Better than nothing. Let me have it. Okay. Now, you get inside that green sedan. Lie down on the floor. You'll be as safe from bullets there as any place. All right, Nick. This switch box on the wall contains the main electrical switches for the entire building. One for the lights and one for power. We've got to keep the garage going upstairs as a blind. But it can't operate without lights. So we cut the lights. Oh, Nick, be careful. I will. I'll be behind this pillar next to the switch box. Joe will have to get those lights on again and quick. And he'll have to pass me in the dark to do it. I left the power switch on so the elevator still runs. You're coming. Oh, Nick. I'm afraid. Don't worry. It'll be over in a minute. One way or the other. Nick and Patsy wait tensely in the darkness, unarmed as the elevator descends, bearing a killer with a gun in his hand and murder in his heart. We'll see what happens in just a moment. Now for the conclusion of the case of the Bearded Queen, today's Nick Carter adventure. Trapped in the the dark sub-basement of the West Pine Street garage, Nick, armed only with a monkey wrench, waits behind a concrete pillar near the light switches for a killer. Across the room, the elevator comes to a stop. The beam of a flashlight cuts the pitch blackness, and a voice says, That was very clever to turn off those lights, Mr. Carter. Clever, but fatal. You leave us no choice but to dispose of you and Miss Bowen now. Come on along with that flashlight, Pops. We'll turn the switch on again. Not so fast, Joe. Carter probably intends to ambush us, even if he doesn't have a gun. Yeah. I'll stay here by the elevator and keep the flashlight on you just in case. Good idea. When the lights is on, we can finish him off nice and easy. I'll get the switch. Yeah. Remember, I have a gun, Mr. Carter, so don't think that you... Oh, Joe! Hey, Pops! What happened to the flashlight? How'd you come to yeah, drop it? Stay right where you are, Joe. Yeah, okay. Mr. Carter's a very accurate at throwing a wrench. The flashlight's broken. You know where I am, Joe, so if you hear a sound in any other part of the room, shoot! Don't worry, I will. Did you get him, Joe? I couldn't have missed it that range, Pops. But I don't know whether it was him or her. It wasn't either, Joe. Oh, hey, Pops, he's over here. Help me. <laughs> Joe. Joe, you all right? Joe, why don't you answer me? This is Joe's gun on your back, Bill. Oh. He doesn't have any more use for it. You better drop the one you're holding. Yeah, yeah. I will. All right, Patsy. Find that light switch. We're taking these two crooks to headquarters. Straight ahead on this street, Scubby. You can't miss the sign out front. The West Side Boys Club, grand opening tonight. Okay. Oh, say, Nick, when you jumped on Joe Ferner in the dark, how'd you know exactly where he was? By the flash of his gun when he fired at something across the room. Oh, I still don't know what he was shooting at. (laughs) I do. Huh? When I heard Bainbridge tell Joe to fire at any sound, I threw my shoe out of the window of the car I was hiding in. And sure enough, he shot at it. (laughs) Good for you, Patsy. Very clever. It distracted Joe's attention just long enough for me to jump in. Great stuff, Patsy. Will you marry me? Oh, Scubby, please. Oh, okay, beautiful. (laughs) And then after I had Joe's gun, it was easy to find Bainbridge in the dark. He kept calling to Joe, so all I had to do was to follow the sound of his voice. Uh Uh-huh. This is it, Nick. The new West Side Boys Club. Just look at the crowd. You have your speech. In my pocket. Good. You know, I'm prouder of being asked to speak at the opening here tonight than I would be if I were asked to address Congress. I guess the other boys who were mixed up with Bainbridge and Ferner will be here, won't they? Oh, of course, Cubby. Nick got them all suspended sentences because of the trickery used to make them steal those cars. And thanks to clubs like this, those boys will now have a chance to grow up right. Hey, Patsy, you know what? What, Scubby? I just realized. Now that you've ridden in my new car, maybe you'll change your mind about marrying me. Well, Scubby, I... I must admit I'm in love with... Me? Ah, no, darling. Your car. (laughs) 
Nick Carter, Master Detective, produced and directed by Jock McGregor, Lon Clark is starred as Nick, with Charlotte Manson featured as Patsy. Scubby is played by John Kane. Today's script was written by Jim Parsons. Original music is played by George Wright. This is Bob Martin. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.